I checked this out weeks ago for a bit of light reading. This is light. Just when we thought the wizarding world of Harry Potter couldn't get any stranger, it turns out that some of the wildest details and craziest characters never even made it onto the page. That's right, so many unbelievable storylines, distant family members, magical creatures, and Hogwarts dramas were cut out of the books before they ever made it to print. While J.K. Rowling is confident she made the right choice, it's amazing to think about how different Harry Potter could have been if only she'd left these details in. You're Harry Potter. I'm Hermione Granger. Back when she was first writing the books, J.K. Rowling had originally planned to give Hermione a little sister. The unnamed Granger sister was going to have magic abilities and was set to arrive at Hogwarts a couple of years after Hermione. But according to Rowling, she just completely forgot to add her in. When the Goblet of Fire came out, she said, I always planned that Hermione would have a younger sister, but she's never made an appearance, and somehow it feels like it might be too late now. What a shame. We would have loved to meet the youngest Granger child, though who knows what she would have been like. One thing we're not sure the fans could have ever forgiven Rowling for is definitely the elimination of Ron Weasley. He's going to sacrifice himself. No, you can't! There must be another way! While JK was writing the series, she found herself in what she describes as a bad place and actually toyed with the idea of Ron losing his life. Everything's gone wrong, so this one good thing in my life will now go wrong as well. But luckily, she knew deep down that she never could. Rupert Grant said he was really nervous to read the last book to find out whether or not his character was going to make it until the end, but also that he was up for Ron not surviving the final fight, as if Fred and Lupin weren't enough. To an outside observer, it would appear that J.K. Rowling has a particular vendetta against the Weasleys, as at one time she planned for Mr. Weasley to be taken out as well. He almost didn't survive the vicious Nagini attack from the Order of the Phoenix, which Rowling considered doing in order to amplify the fear of Lord Voldemort. Thankfully for us and the Weasley family, she couldn't go through with it. To Mr. Harry Potter, without whom I would not be here. Draco Malfoy is definitely one of the most iconic names in the Harry Potter universe, but it wasn't always this way. I think my name was funny, do you? Malfoy comes from the French phrase Malfoy, meaning bad faith, which suits the entire family perfectly. But before JK landed on it, Draco's last name was going to be Spongin. Spongin! Draco Spongin! No one is striking fear into the hearts of their enemies with a last name like Spongin. That's for sure. Somehow, it's even worse than Hermione's original last name, which was Puckle. Pleasure. We wouldn't exactly call anyone that Malfoy hangs out with his friends. Yet, for a brief moment, he almost did have a real one. Rowling created a character named Theodore Knott, who was supposed to become good friends with Malfoy, as both of their families were prominent Death Eaters. She even wrote a scene in which Theodore's father went to visit Lucius Malfoy at their home, and the two boys sat outside and talked about Harry and Dumbledore. You think there's someone here who's worse than Dumbledore? Harry Potter. It's really a shame that that scene was cut out, as it would have been a really interesting way to see Malfoy on his own. In The Goblet of Fire, J.K. Rowling almost included a Weasley family member who really stuck out from the rest. Red hair and a hand-me-down robe. You must be a Weasley. She wanted to introduce Ron's cousin, Mafalda, who would have been sorted into Slytherin. Yep, she was going to be a troublesome kid and the total opposite of the rest of the Weasley family. Rowling even planned for her to become a match for Hermione academically and become her rival. How cool would it have been to see that rivalry unfold? I don't think you're a waste of space. Thanks. While it is hard to root for Dudley Dursley, he and Harry did make amends eventually, after Dudley went on to have children of his own. But for a brief moment, J.K. Rowling almost gave him a very ironic challenge, a magical son of his own. The plan didn't last long, however, as the idea was put to rest when Rowling decided that any latent wizarding genes would never survive Uncle Vernon's DNA. My parents are dentists. And is that a dangerous profession? One boy did bite my father once. Originally, Hermione's parents were going to be a hugely important part of Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. In early drafts of the book, Rowling had Lily and James Potter living on an island and the Granger family living nearby on the shore. When Voldemort attacked the family, Mr. Granger was to be the first to hear the screams before jumping in his rowboat and trying to save the family. He was actually supposed to be the one who discovered baby Harry instead of Hagrid. In The Goblet of Fire, J.K. Rowling originally intended to include a character named Mopsy, who is obsessed with dogs because 
who isn't. Mopsy would unknowingly take in Sirius Black in his animal form, thinking he was a stray dog. The tail I could live with, but the fleas. According to Rowling, she didn't add anything to the plot, and it was far more tragic for Sirius to have lived for years in caves instead of with Mopsy. Vampires were briefly touched on in the Harry Potter books, but never really explored. But that could have been different if Rowling had stuck to her original idea and included a vampire teacher at Hogwarts named Professor Troker. Ultimately, Troker was cut because, as Rowling said, the vampire myth has been exploited so many times in literature and on film, I felt there was little I could add to the tradition. She makes a good point. Dean Thomas was a regular supporting character in Harry Potter, but according to one chapter from the Chamber of Secrets that was cut out, he was supposed to play a way bigger part. I didn't know you could do that. In this mysterious chapter, Rowling revealed that Thomas was raised by his mother and stepfather, who were both muggles, after his wizard father left and never told him about his powers. But as it turns out, his father actually met his fate at the hands of Death Eaters when he refused to join them. Back in The Philosopher's Stone, J.K. Rowling almost included a character who might have changed everything, if she hadn't cut him out. Mopsis, a blind wizard with extremely powerful divination abilities. Unfortunately, because he was so powerful, he would have predicted Voldemort's attack and the boy who lived would never have become a thing. She didn't get rid of him entirely, however, as she gave many of Mopsis's traits to Mad-Eye Moody and, of course, Professor Trelawney. Together we shall cast ourselves into the future. In the Chamber of Secrets, Nearly Headless Nick was supposed to get to sing a ballad telling the grisly tale of how he became Nearly Headless. How can you be Nearly Headless? Like this. And even though Rowling said it was a wrench to cut it, she decided it was not important to the plot. The song can be found online, however, and has tons of gruesome details about what happened on that fateful day. I read something rather odd about a bit of rare magic. It's called a Horcrux. We all know the story of the seven Horcruxes, and how Tom Riddle was obsessed with using the Founder's items in order to store parts of his soul. The only ones he could get his hands on were Ravenclaw's Diadem, Slytherin's Locket, and Hufflepuff's Golden Chalice. According to J.K. Rowling, the chalice was originally going to be a cauldron, but because that would have been way bigger and much harder to lug around and then destroy, she changed it. The final words of the original Harry Potter series make up one short, comforting phrase all was well. But originally, Rowling was intent that the last word would be scar, which made sense, but all of that changed as she was writing the final chapters. Rowling had said that she really wanted a very concrete statement that Harry won, and that the scar, although it's still there, is now just a scar. It's the best I can do. It's how I always planned it to end. It's crazy to think how different the books would have been if J.K. Rowling had left in all these strange details. We're the most curious about Mafalda Weasley and her rivalry with Hermione. What about you? 